still almost two decades away from Federation, a settlement of vast contrasts, incomparable wealth due to the gold rush, industrialisation and excruciating poverty, a disparity that was as unsettling as it was unsightly behind the sophisticated veneer. Many of Melbourne's children could not be cared for by their often impoverished families and were left to roam the streets. Selena really um, founded the beginnings of the organisation that we know as Kildonan today. Um, she was quite a mover and a shaker and was a missionary at Scots Church. The thing about the Scots Church organisation was it very quickly became the preeminent one. It, it actually had a, no, a huge number of children. In fact, in its first 10 years, they had over a thousand children that they looked after. She, she was passionate about the plight of the poor, so she understood the sort of systemic problems and challenged people on that as well. She's very orientated towards people, but also understood the political and was able to be a very strong advocate. She certainly um, had a meeting with Alfred Deakin before the 1887 Neglected Children's Act was even instituted and she really argued very strongly that individual and private people be allowed to pick destitute children up off the street. She actually was told by the church to go into Little Burke Street and Little Collins Street and actually pick up these children and also to help the fathers and mothers as well. So there was an aspect of nursing as well as looking after children who either didn't have a parent or had a very ill parent. And I think Kildonan is the same today. It's that ground level work where you see the need and you respond accordingly. From Selina Sutherland's initial wish to care for the neglected and forgotten children of Melbourne, an organisation of hope and faith has grown. In the years following 1881, Selina's dream and vision has developed into a significant force in the Melbourne area. The overall mission is about um, building thriving communities and addressing issues to do with inequality and disadvantage and ensuring that people have access to fully participate in their life and in society and giving them the opportunities to do that. We not only provide direct service delivery but we are also in uh, the business of advocating for individuals and families and working on broader systemic change for them. In Kildonan's history, we did that up front by being different and saying to the system, you don't have a process for children who are homeless and looking at government policies to change that. Later on, in, in the 50s and 60s, we developed um, uh, uh, family group homes. That had not been done before. That was a, a new thing that um, happened for its, for its time. In our family services programs, we were one of the first agencies to take on board the Families First program that looked at working intensively with families, at preventing the removal of children from families and also reunifying families as well. Mm -hmm. In 2000, we started working with corporates and getting them into the picture by saying, hey, you're part of this. If we're going to rebuild a sustainable and vibrant community in the future, you've got to be around the table, mm -hmm. along with government, along with other community services organisations. No acknowledgement of Kildonan's ongoing strength and success would be complete without mention of the extraordinary support it gets from its corporate sponsors and partners, be that direct financial support, in-kind support, donation or bequest. We must also take time to acknowledge the professional and selfless dedication of our board of directors. Dr Kay Stevens, Ms Kate Long, Dr Ray Dawson, Mr Neville John and their fellow board members, Mr Bruce Anderson, Mr Neil Bell, Mr Peter Boyle, Ms Carolyn Fryer, Ms Narita Hall and Dr Ian Patrick. Kildonan runs um, a range of programs that in effect wrap around families and that's what we talk about holistic care and services for families. So part of that is direct service delivery where we provide counselling, casework, um, support schemes for individuals and, and families. The other part of the work we do is partnerships with community service organisations and with corporate service organisations where we're looking to corporates and saying to them, um, you know what, your customer and our customer are actually the same customer. Mm -hmm. um, and if we both work collaboratively around how to build um, better outcomes for them, then you'll have a customer for life and we'll have healthy individuals that can participate in the community. I think we're making a difference. In the end of the day, we're both, we're both about customer service. I mean, obviously we're very different organisations, but um, the major outcome for me is that we're dealing with a segment of customers who are 
um, you know, low income and vulnerable, they're not in a position necessarily to um, be able to work their way through without some support. So um, I'm really proud of the work that we've done to help them through that. And Kildonan has provided us the, the skills and the techniques and the infrastructure and the training and the communication to be able to do that. So at the end of the day, it's okay to say we've won an award, a Prime Minister's Award, which is fantastic from a media perspective, but what we get every day is feedback from customers on the way we deal with them. You know, you're different. I can't believe you're listening to me. When I tell you something, you believe me. No one else does. I ring other utilities and they don't believe me that I can't afford to pay. You listen. To us, that's, that's like gold. That means that the program is working. Um, so it's very much about a personalised approach. And for us, the major benefit of Kildonan is to bring that skill set to our team. I think it's also provided some great returns for us. We're collecting money that arguably we wouldn't have collected before. A lot of businesses think that you're going to get thousands and thousands and thousands of people trying to play a game. I think with the training that Kildonan's provided us, that we've found out that that's not, that's not actually factual. Most people genuinely want to pay. They just can't afford to pay. So how do you deal with it? Origin first got involved with the Kildonan around 2003. We knew that we wanted to do something with our vulnerable customers, but we didn't know what. And Kildonan were one of the most vocal consumer advocates that, that, that we found. One of the primary principles of our Power On programme, which is we should accept what customers say to us in good faith and afford them support without qualification. I've never met anybody who doesn't want to pay their bills. Uh, if you don't have cash to pay your bills, uh, uh, the example I always use is if, if you go into Coles and you swipe your card just after you've been paid, so you know there's money in your account, and it goes, uh -uh, it's not the most wonderful feeling in the world. Uh, anxiety, embarrassment. So. I could never make the correlation that of anybody who would actually willingly put themselves in that circumstance. But customers that have got chronic payment difficulties, uh, helping them with their energy bill is, is only fixing a little bit of it. They've got several other debtors and the Kildonan workers can take a more holistic position with regards to a particular customer circumstances and look to help them navigate through the various challenges that they're experiencing so they can get to the point of self-reliance at the end of it. And that's been a great success in that programme. Uh, so much so that we get certainly the Victorian government has actually legislated that all retailers must actually offer an energy audit uh, as an aspect of their, their support programmes. The fact that we're 128 years old, there's been some amazing things that happened early on and, and people like Selena Sutherland had an, an amazing vision to do what she did all those years ago. I think we need to uh, really look forward for the next 128 years. The diversity in the community is going to increase. The demand for our services is going to increase. Um, but I think we need to ensure that we provide the types of services that people need for as long as they need them. The energy industry has changed and, and made a significant made significant progress. But nothing else has. So if we're actually dealing with a customer and helping them with their energy, eh, the banks might be still trying to take their pound of flesh. Credit card companies, if they've got a car loan. Right? So in isolation, we can't do an awful lot for a customer's whole circumstances. So what we need to try and do is engage all debtors, all businesses that collect money. What we have to do better is to understand that we can't do it alone, that in fact it's not just the community sector, the community services sector that's responsible for the wellbeing of uh, children and families, that it's a collective responsibility. And if we want healthy, happy families, that it's the profit, the for-profit and the not-for-profit sectors that need to come together and collaborate. To what you